Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes 3rd Edition, and we're doing problem number 4.10. The problem statement says 300 gallons of a mixture containing 75 weight percent ethanol, ethyl alcohol, and 25 percent water mixture, specific gravity equals 0 0.877, and a quantity of 40 weight percent ethanol, 60 percent water mixture, specific gravity equals 0 0.952, are blended to produce a mixture containing 60 weight percent ethanol. The object of this problem is to determine V40, the required volume of the 40% mixture. Part A, draw and label a flow chart of the mixing process and do a degree of freedom analysis. Okay, so I've written down all the information here. Um, we have that we've got 300 gallons of this mixture going into this container. And uh, we want to know how much we have going into this mixture. And um, and I've labeled all the you know components here, um, and then they also give us these components. Now to do the degree of freedom analysis, um, we know that we've got three unknowns. I've highlighted each of the unknowns here: mass one, mass two, and mass three. And we can do two material balances with our ethanol and our water. And we can do one process specification. And that process spec that they gave to us was the 300 gallon right here. That's why that's highlighted in red. Now with all that information, we have three unknowns and uh, three pieces of, of information that we can create independent equations around. Um, so that means that our degree of freedom analysis is 3 minus 3 equals 0. So we have 0 degrees of freedom. Okay, now part B, it says calculate V40. Okay, so let's start off by doing our material balances so we can create our independent equations. And we should get three of them. Okay, so we've got one independent equation here. This is our ethanol material balance. And then we've got our second independent equation here. This is our water material balance. Now it might be a little tricky as to how to proceed from for this next part, but the correct way to do it, um, I believe, is to do an overall mass balance and then add in the process spec. And that gives you um, the process spec surrounded by information that makes it a little more useful um, as it pertains to this mixing process. Because if you just try and use this problem, it's kind of hard to see, or if you just try and use this equation, it's kind of hard to see how it relates to the to the overall mixing process. Um, so if you do an overall mass balance, which is mass one plus mass two equals mass three, then you can plug in some of this information and it becomes an independent equation because you've used new information. Now if you just tried to do an overall mass balance without using the extra information that we know, um, then uh, the overall mass balance would not be an independent equation. So it's important that you add in the, the extra information that you know in order to make it different from the first two mass balances that we did. So this by itself is not an independent equation from these two equations. But once I change this and add in that the mass time or the mass equals the volume times the density, and I substitute that in for because we know what the volume of, of the first stream was, now this becomes an independent equation and uh, it relates to mass two and mass three, which are two of our unknowns. Now I think I've forgotten to state that um, that in each one of these equations, I've highlighted in yellow all of the unknowns in each equation. 
So we have three unknowns in the first equation, mass one, mass two, mass three, and we use all three unknowns in the second equation, one, two, and three of the masses. And then in the overall mass balance, um, we do not use mass one, and we substitute in our knowledge of how much volume of stream one we used. And we also know the specific gravity. So this is not unknown, but we still have these two unknowns. Now that is three independent equations and three unknowns, and so we can just do our um, process of uh, solving that using linear algebra or whatever math you, you would like uh, to solve that system of equations, and you get this result, or you should get this result. The goal of this problem is to solve um, is to solve for what the volume of stream 2 is. We can solve that now because we know what mass 2 is, and they gave us the specific gravity or the density of stream 2. So you just solve these equations and you get this final result. Now, let me also cover a trap that people fall into. If you've forgotten from chapter 3, you cannot use this relation and it would be it would seem very tempting to use this equation you cannot use this equation because the volume is not conserved so you cannot um, say volume of stream 1 plus volume of stream 2 equals volume of stream 3 the the volumes when you add them together literally shrink or expand um, they they literally like physically they change volume when you mix them together it seems kind of crazy but um, imagine it uh, imagine you have a, a bottle of sand or a bottle of gravel or something like that and then you uh, pour water into that bottle um, does the level of the water change um, the level of the water changes, but maybe it doesn't add right on top of the volume of the gravel because there's space in between the gravel, right? So if you pour the water into the gravel, the water level will rise, but it will fill in all the little cracks and uh, um, empty spaces in between the large chunks of gravel. And so the water doesn't just get added right on top of the gravel. Um, and so you can't say that the, the two volumes end up equaling each other if you just add them together. Okay, so in reality, this is the actual equation. Um, volume 1 plus volume 2 equals a change in the mixture volume, which, uh, or plus the change in mixture volume equals the, um, the volume 3. Okay, so, but this we can't use this equation because we don't have any information as to how much the volume changes when you mix these two streams together. So we can't even use this equation. So, so don't try and go this route unless they tell you to in the problem to say, okay, I'm gonna assume that this is true even though I know that it isn't, it's just an approximation, okay? And that's it for problem number 4.10. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem-solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.